Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm here to do another science fiction and fantasy wrap up. Mostly science fiction, but I have a few fantasy books to sneak in at the end of this. I've had a up and down reading month when it comes to SFF and a very unexpected reread, so maybe let's start there and get into the recommendations. First, if you saw the title of this video, you already know that I read Dune by Frank Herbert, but if you've been following my channel, you might be confused because I just read this book. I just reviewed it in what was probably my last or second last wrap-up video, and yes, I'm here once again to talk about it because after I reviewed it, the short was that I appreciated the book, but I really struggled to be fully immersed in it, and quite frankly, I didn't quite understand the hype and this book did not live up to my expectations but I prefaced my review by saying that I definitely wanted to reread the book at some point in the future and I had a feeling that my feelings might change or improve with a reread but when I said that I was assuming I was going to reread this book you know maybe two years from now and talk about it again on my channel well then maybe two weeks after filming that wrap up I started thinking about Dune again and I couldn't get it off my mind I think just there's so much Dune content out there right now everyone's talking about it with a movie coming out and I just started to crave rereading Dune so that's exactly what I did I read it in just a couple days despite how chunky it is I flew through it on reread so I will say that even on reread this wasn't quite a five-star read but I really enjoyed it and I appreciate it so much more I think what didn't work for me the first time was the fact that there are so many tropes and twists and turns in this book that felt very predictable because I have seen other media both in movies and books that have reproduced and stolen in all of these tropes and my problem is that because I have watched and consumed all this other media before getting to Dune this felt old and predictable so the first time going through this book I expected to be wowed and surprised by it and I never really was but the advantage when you go back and reread a book of course is that I already know who was gonna die I knew all of the backstabbing all of the twists and turns and I wasn't reading it to be surprised but rather to experience a story to get more out of it and I really did. So I will say I appreciate the characters so much more. In a way they read like archetypes but in other ways, especially for the time that it was written, I feel like it's quite nuanced, especially some of the female characters compared to a lot of other classic science fiction I've read. I feel like Frank Herbert did some interesting things with the character of Jessica. I also like the fact that it plays with the chosen one trope, the messiah trope, and I've heard that they get into that one more in the follow-up books, so I am tempted to keep going with the series. I would love opinions down below. I know my friend Thomas from SFF 180 says heck no, but a lot of other people say to continue, so I kind of need some tiebreakers. Please influence me whether or not I should keep going with the series and at least finish the other Frank Herbert books. I know not to go on with the Sun's books. Pretty much everyone is on the same page about that one. So overall, really impressed by this one. I will say that there's still a few things in the book that did not age well for me and just simply things that if this book was written and published in the current day, I think the editors would have made some suggestions in terms of some of the things but you know that's to be expected with again a book that is an older classic but yeah I kind of understand the Dune hype I had a lot of fun rereading it I can't believe how fast I read it and I'm really excited for the movie I just need to find a babysitter because yeah I want to check it out I just don't know when that's gonna happen Next, I read Escaping First Contact by T.S. Byer. This is a book that I received from the author for review. I just recently hauled it and was very eager to check it out as soon as I finished filming that video. And this was described to me as space horror. And unfortunately, I don't feel like that subgenre really fits this book. That being said, what this book was, I did enjoy for the most part. Now, what the story is about is a group of ships that are going off to investigate an alien ship and they are going to see what is inside. And so it certainly sounds like a piece of space opera horror, but for me, it never had the element of suspense and dread that I look for in my horror. And while this is described as space opera, yes, it technically is because it's set in space. 
it's really much more about the characters and so it felt much more intimate and smaller in scope than I expected given that label. But what I liked about it is that this book is not human centric. So it's set in a future where humans exist and there are other aliens out there and a lot of this book is told from the perspective of those aliens and they are just not like humans which is so refreshing. I'm someone who comes from a background of watching tons of Star Trek and things like that and I find so often in the sci-fi shows or books you get the idea that aliens are just slightly different people and in this case the aliens were truly alien. They looked different, they spoke different, they had different thought patterns, different cultural ideas, different ideas surrounding gender and sexuality and it just felt so refreshing the degree to which the author took the time to build the alien species and a lot of the book is just the characters interacting, discussing their differences and I found it to be very fascinating. So I will say that the plot itself felt a little bit thin but I really enjoyed spending time with the characters and I think the characters are really what shone through in this book because you really get to explore some really interesting world building. So I will say cool world building, not as immersive in terms of the story that I wanted it to be but I still really enjoyed spending time in this world and thought that the author had some really creative ideas when it comes to different alien life. Next up, I read Shards of Earth by Adrian Tchaikovsky, which is an epic space opera set in a future where aliens show up around Earth and they decide to reconstruct the Earth and make almost this beautiful artifact. But in so doing this, they completely destroy the planet, make it inhabitable, and billions of people die. The Earth or rather the humans have other colonies and so there are still survivors but the human race has really been devastated by this event and after this first event happens the architects continually come back and repurpose and redesign the space colonies of the surviving humans and so humanity is on the run there is no fighting back there is no battle because these aliens are so advanced and eventually the architect aliens disappear and there seems to be peace until the different colonies and different groups begin to fight within themselves which is when the story begins and then of course perhaps these architect aliens are going to come back and with that the story goes from there. This book is incredibly dense, incredibly complex, and so interesting. Of course I love the world building, I love the setup. It is really interesting to read about a future where humanity has almost already lost and where the story goes is just fascinating. I think Adrian Tchaikovsky is really good at creating interesting stories that just feel very different, very new, and there are so many space operas out there that kind of have the same premise, but this one just is so intelligent, so complex and thoughtful how it's done. I've seen this book compared to The Expanse, and while it has some of the similar ideas in terms of plot, I will say that this one is not as accessible for those of you that want to get into space opera. The Expanse, despite the length, is very approachable, and this one is definitely one that will be best appreciated appreciated by people who are already reading science fiction. For the most part, I really did enjoy this one. If I had a complaint, it's the fact that with Adrian Tchaikovsky's science fiction, I have found that he tends to keep the reader at a little bit of a distance from the characters. I never felt like I really knew them on a very intimate level. Instead, you have this epic story, which is really interesting to follow through, but I never felt personally connected to any of the characters. And certainly there's multiple points of view. You move forward through time and it is fascinating but just again not that close intimate perspective that I typically like with science fiction. Overall I'm very excited to see where this trilogy goes and I am very interested to reread this one. I think that it's just going to get better and better because there's so many details packed into the story and I know I'm going to pick up even more the next time I go through it. From there, I read Far From the Light of Heaven by Tadia Thompson. This is set in a future where there is a ship that is going off to a Earth colony. It should just be 
a very standard mission through space, so all of the passengers are put to sleep in cryogenic sleep, except for there is the human who is in charge of piloting the ship, but really the ship is gonna be piloted by the artificial intelligence and they're just there as a backup. However, something goes wrong, the pilot wakes up and they find out that there's something wrong not only with the AI, but also they realize that several people have been murdered or killed in their passenger list and they need to figure out what happened. This book is described as a closed door mystery in space. So the idea is that people have been killed and there's only a limited number of suspects. And I think the premise is a lot of fun. In terms of the execution, I liked it, but something held me back from really loving it. I think the fact that I never got, again, really immersed in the story has a lot to do with the fact that I never got completely attached to any of the characters characters. A really fun concept and it reminded me a lot of Six Wakes by Mer Lafferty. So if you like that premise, I'd also recommend checking out that one. Definitely excited to get a chance to read a newer release and I enjoyed it, but I just feel like it wasn't as memorable as I wish it was. I thought it was going to be an all-time favorite or at least a favorite of the year and I'll be honest, I don't think it's going to make the cut. Next, I read Planet of the Apes by Pierre Bouly, which is a book translated from French. And this is set in a future where we have an astronaut who is traveling through space with his companions, and they end up crashing onto a planet that happens to be inhabited by highly intelligent apes, gorillas, and other monkey-like creatures. On this planet, you find out that there are humans. However, they appear to be very low in terms of intelligence and appear more like animals as if they are the monkeys. So essentially this story has the roles reversed where the humans act like monkeys and the monkeys act like men. Now this story is told from the perspective of the male astronaut and it's essentially just his inner monologue of recounting the events that happened. He is captured and has to prove his intelligence and then when he is able to demonstrate his intelligence that becomes very dangerous because they are worried in in terms of shaking up society, what would it mean for the civilization if humans were intelligent when otherwise they believe them to be very dumb animals. I have watched all of the old movies. I used to watch them always when I was sick growing up and so I have really fond memories of those movies and until recently I didn't actually know that this was based off of a book and so I was really excited to see this source material. I expected the book to be really campy and don't get me wrong, you really have to suspend your disbelief if you're going to go along with the premise, but once you do that, I found this book to be actually very thoughtful, very compelling. It makes some really interesting commentary around the experiments we do on animals and just a lot of good social commentary. In some ways, this book has not aged perfectly well. There definitely are some really uncomfortable scenes and plot points that I don't think you would see in the modern day if this book was written today. But overall, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was so compelling and I'm definitely interested in continuing on with the series. I don't know when that'll happen, but yeah, it made me really excited for the books and I also want to rewatch all of the movies because again, I love them so much. I adore those movies and I'm sure they don't hold up to my memory but I had a lot of fun watching them all growing up. Next up, I read The Wind-Up Girl, which is a dystopian novel set in a future where we have bioengineered food to a point that it has started to turn against us and now there is a calorie or food shortage and then scientists have to continually keep bioengineering the food in order to try to keep ahead and make it edible and sustaining for humans. This story is incredibly dark. I liked it, but you really have to be in the mood for it. I think it was a little bit long for me, but it really played with some interesting, again, very dark ideas. One being, of course, the title comes from the fact that there are these girls known as wind-up girls who have been genetically engineered in order to be sex slaves. They perform, as you would expect, and take on the role of prostitutes. It is dark and disturbing and tons of content warnings of course with all of that subject matter but oh my goodness it's quite the story I was warned that it was going to be a depressing one and it definitely was but overall glad I read it and yeah I'd be interested to read more by this author for sure
And finally, let's talk fantasy. I read Ghost Talkers by Mary Robinette Qual. This is a piece of historical fantasy that is set during World War I. We follow a woman who works as a medium for the British forces and in her job, she contacts the spirits of soldiers that have recently died on the front lines and she gets them to provide the leadership with various information in terms of strategy, positions of the enemy, and all of that. Now, I really like the premise of this one. I do want to say that while it deals with ghosts, it's definitely fantasy, not horror. It is not meant to be scary at all. And if I had a struggle with this book, it's the fact that I am a huge skeptic when it comes to the paranormal. And so the premise surrounding mediums didn't entirely work for me, but there's still a lot I liked about it. First being the fact that it reminded me of the Lady Astronaut series, the historical science fiction series that I'm constantly gushing about on here. And like in in The Lady Astronauts, this book deals a lot with the role of women in these historical periods. This book definitely has some great commentary, not just on gender roles, but also addressing the challenges of being a person of color because some of the mediums are black and you see how they are treated as second class citizens at this time. So I thought this book did some really interesting things from a topical perspective in terms of that commentary. but. If I had a complaint, it's the fact that there was a lot of romance in this book. This book has a lot to do with the relationship between the medium and her fiance. And I just don't like romance in my books, I'm so sorry. So overall, I liked it, didn't love it. If you enjoy historical fantasy, if you enjoy urban fantasy, this one it might be one you wanna check out. I really do think that Mary Robinette Qual is an excellent storyteller. So that is it for this video here. I would love to hear your comments down below of the books I talked about. Are you planning on checking out any of them for yourself? And I'd also love to hear about a time where you read a book and it got better and better the second time or third time around. I'm definitely going to be one of those people who will continually reread Dune in the future. I am so excited about it. So again, let me know if I should continue on with the rest of Frank Herbert's series. I at least am tempted to do the original trilogy. So let me know if I should do that or not. Otherwise, if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I do read a lot of horror, science fiction, thrillers, and fantasy. And if you're interested, you can help me out by giving this video a thumbs up, sharing it around online. And if you hit that little notification bell, you'll never miss a video from me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.